Hey guys, welcome to Raw Customs. I'm your host, Patrick Rapolo, and on this episode, we're going to be putting together the Captain America chest armor. So to start, I have a kit as well as a template. If you're interested in either one of those, head down to the description area below. You'll find links there. Now, the armor is designed to fit over the top of you, more like a poncho. This way, it can fit a larger variety of people. So with this in mind, I have two sizes. I have a large or a size one which will cover a men's large or an extra large and a second size which will cover a men's medium or a small now the kit comes with all your foam pieces cut etched and ready for you to get started on your project now as far as strapping you'll need to come up with an idea for that I actually use dog collars for this piece which I picked up from the dollar store now another option to use for straps would be to use some elastic with some snaps like I used on the thigh armor. I actually believe this would actually work out better and I plan on trying it on my next build that I do. The reason I say that is that way when you're moving around with your armors on, it's allowed to flex and stretch out and there's a lot less chance that you would actually rip this out and actually make it more flexible for you to wear. Now I actually have two different methods so far that I've used to put the shoulder pieces on. The first one being using a just a piece of foam that actually comes with the kit. This is definitely the easiest and fastest method and actually holds it the best. Now the second method I used is to actually use elastic on the top pieces to hold it in place and down on the bottom so that it can stretch and move. Now, if you're interested in that method, go check out my tactical chest armor video. I actually use that method when I'm building that set of armor. And here's just a quick look at what it looks like when it's finished and how it fits. All right, guys, let's get to the video and assemble. For this build, you're going to need the kit or the templates. If you go with the templates, you're going to need eight sheets of 5mm EVA foam, 12 by 18 inch sheets, some contact cement, Plasti Dip, spray paint, a heat gun, a rotary tool, a razor knife, an airbrush is optional, and something for strapping. The kit comes with all your foam pieces cut out for the chest, back, and shoulders. To get started, I recommend separating all your parts for each section. There are two stars in the kit. The smaller one is for the chest. There are reference lines marked on the main body for all your overlay pieces. Lay your overlay pieces up in place by matching them up with the reference lines. This is a little bit like a puzzle, but a simple one. Once you have all your pieces laid out, I recommend removing them one by one, then marking the back side of the overlay and the marked area inside the reference lines to make sure you glue the piece down in the right spot. To make your overlay pieces look better, I recommend putting a half bevel around each one. When I say half bevel, I mean a bevel about 45 degrees around half the thickness of the foam. But this is just an option, the bevel is not necessary for construction. 
You could also round the edges over or even leave them as they are. After all, this is your build, so do what you think looks good or what's within your skill level. Once you have your overlay pieces prepped, it's time to start gluing sections together. Start with your two base pieces for the ab section. Apply glue to the inside edge on each piece. On the collar section, apply glue to the top edge on both sides and to the bottom edge of each strap. I recommend applying two coats of glue to all edges. Glue the two ab section pieces together, starting at the bottom and working your way to the top, keeping the top surface area flush. Glue the collar and strap together, working from the inside edge out. For glue, I recommend using contact cement. Next, apply glue to the marked surface area inside your reference lines and to the bottom surface area of your overlay pieces. On your surface areas, I just recommend using one coat of glue. Once your glue is set up, you can line up the overlay pieces with your reference lines and then firmly press them in place.
On the chest area you have two strips that go to the bottom. The fat edge goes to the center. Next, take one side of the chest and heat it with a heat gun on both sides. Once the piece is heated, you'll want to form it over something round. For a guy's chest armor, you're just going to want to put a little bit of roundness in it. This particular armor I'm actually making for my daughter. So I'm going to spend more time on the chest pieces trying to get more curve out of them. To try and get more of a lady's chest shape. If you'd like to see how I did the guy's chest armor, you can refer back to my tactical chest armor video. Since this is for a lady, I'm actually pressing down and trying to stretch the center of the chest piece without stretching the edges. Once the piece is cooled, it'll hold its shape. Next, apply glue to the inside surface area along the bottom edge and to the curved edge on the bottom piece. I recommend two coats of glue on this section. Once the glue set, press your pieces together starting at the inside edge and working your way to the outside edge. The fat end goes to the inside edge. Since the chest piece has been heated and curved, you'll most likely have some extra hanging off from the bottom piece. Use some scissors or a razor to cut off the extra. Once your two pieces are glued together, you can use a rotary tool with a grinding stone to clean up the bottom seam and round over the bottom edge. Next, apply glue to the inside edge on both pieces. Allow the glue time to set and then press the two pieces together starting at the top and working your way to the bottom. Next, apply glue inside the reference line for the star and to the bottom surface area of the star. Once the glue is set, you can press the star in place. Take the ab section and heat it on both sides. Then you'll want to bend and form it to fit you. Next, apply glue to the bottom edge of the chest section and to the top surface area of the ab section along the reference lines. Glue the chest section in place starting in the center and working your way out to the side one at a time. Keep the bottom edge lined up with your reference line as you work your way out and match the chest to the curvature of the ab section.
At the top of the ab section, you'll have a little hangover past the chest. Use scissors or a razor to cut off the extra. Next, heat the collar section on both sides. Then curve the straps down on each side. Apply glue to the bottom surface area along your reference line. On the chest section, apply glue to the bottom surface area along the top edge. Glue the collar section in place starting in the center and working your way out to the edge following the reference line. If you're making this for a guy, you're done with the front section for now. If this is being made for a girl, you may need to add more body to the chest area. To do this, reheat the chest area back and front, and then lay it on something round to form it. You'll want to use something small and round to form the chest. The goal here is to actually stretch the foam, so you may need to reheat the foam several times to get it to form and stretch. Make sure you watch your edges while you're doing this. Since you've heated them, the glue could reactivate and the seams could separate. If the seams do separate, just press them back together. And I recommend working one side at a time. You'll repeat the same process for the back section as you did for the front. Lay out and mark your pieces, bevel your edges, and then glue them in place. Once everything's glued together, heat your back section on both sides, form it to fit your back, and then roll down the shoulder straps. For the shoulders, you have a center base, a center overlay, two side base pieces, two side overlays, and a top center overlay. On the overlays, put a half bevel on the outside edge all the way around. On the base side pieces, you'll want to put a full bevel around 45 degrees along the top edge on the back side. The longest side is the top edge. 
on the center base section apply glue to the top surface area inside the reference lines and to the bottom surface area of the center overlay. Once the glue is set, you can press the two pieces together. Next, heat the section on both sides and form it over something round, closing up the top seam. You're wanting to curve and form the top of the shoulder. Allow the bottom to hang out and stay mostly flat. Next, apply glue to the inside seam. Once the glue is set, press the edges together, working from the bottom to the top. Heat the top center overlay and form it over something round. Then line it up with the reference line on the shoulder piece and trace the edges on both sides. Apply glue to your marked area and to the overlay piece and glue the section in place. Next, heat your base side pieces and form them over something round. On the center section, apply glue to the edges on both sides. On the side pieces, apply glue to the beveled edge. Glue the side piece in place, starting at the front edge and working your way to the back, keeping the top seam flush. Once your pieces are glued together, you can use a rotary tool to clean up the top seam. Heat up the side overlays and form them over something round. Then apply your glue and press them in place. At this point, I've come up with two ways to attach the shoulder armor to the chest. The first is using Velcro straps. If you want to see that version, you can check out my tactical chest armor video. On this set of armor, I'm going to go with the easy version. Using the square piece of foam that comes in the kit. Line your square piece up and center it on the bottom surface area at the top of the shoulder piece. Let your square overlap the edge around an inch. Then trace a reference line onto the square and to the bottom of the shoulder piece. Apply glue to your two pieces using your reference marks and then press the pieces together. Now it's time to glue the chest and back together. Apply glue to the edges of the shoulder straps and to the bottom of the overlay on the back piece. On the chest apply glue to the top surface area of the base piece behind the overlay and to the edges of the strap. Glue the sections together first by lining up the edges and then pressing down the overlay. At this point you'll want to put the chest armor on. 
Then slide the square on the shoulder piece underneath the top strap of the chest armor. Now you can adjust the shoulder piece to fit the way you want. Once you have it adjusted, make a reference line for depth and make a mark that lines up with the seam between the chest and back so you can center the shoulder back up. One option for straps is to use dog collars. If you're going this route, you'll want to cut the leash ring and remove it. Then cut the collar in two, leaving around three inches on the side without the adjustment. At this point, figure out how many straps you want to use on each side and where you want to place them. I recommend setting the adjustment on the strap somewhere in the center to allow you to lengthen the belt or shorten it. Mark the belt and the chest armor where it'll set. Line the belt up in place on the inside of the armor, then trace around the edges to make reference marks. Next, apply glue to your marked areas and your straps. I recommend using two coats of glue on the straps as well as the armor. Allow time for your glue to set and then press your pieces together. If you're like me and you would like just a little bit of extra support on the straps, you can cut some scrap foam to lay over the back side. Next, set the shoulder pieces in place following your reference line and center mark. Then trace a reference line around your square on the inside of the armor. Apply glue to your marked areas and then press your pieces in place. Now it's time to seal and paint the armor. To seal, I recommend using Plasti Dip. I like to use two light coats followed by two heavy coats. Once the Plasti Dip's dry, you can apply your paint. For paint, I usually use two light coats followed by one to two heavy coats. On the base color, I recommend spraying the entire armor. I didn't do this and I ended up having a couple of issues with the paint. If you're planning on spraying on multiple colors, you'll need to allow the base paint to dry and then everything you want to keep that color taped off. And then your next color sprayed on and then the process repeated until all the colors have been painted on. To add details and highlights, I like to use an airbrush, but you could always use just a regular brush, a foam brush, or whatever works for you. And to finish the paint job off, I like to use two coats of clear.
All right, guys, there you go. The Captain America chest armor finally finished up and ready for you guys to build your own suit. Now, I actually think I have finished up all the pieces that I want to uh, actually make for this particular costume, including the leg armor. Uh, so I plan on pretty soon throwing together uh, another little photo shoot, uh, probably with both of them. And, you know, once I do that, I'll be sharing those photos with you guys. So, of course, I got lots of kits that I'm working on, one of them being a laser visor kit, guys. So, I just finished putting the paint job on this. I just wanted to share that with y'all. You can see how that looks. So, another kit that I'm working on, guys, is the Wolverine Weapon X helmet. Put quite a bit of detail and time into this. This is like the second test build on it. Have one more to build and film, and then I, once I get around to it, I'll be putting this out for you guys, too, as well. Well, all right, guys, that's it for this build. God bless, and I'll see you on the next one.